Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to have a look at financial accounts preparation, particularly the level three module that you find at AET. So we're just going to cover some of the topics that I discussed in that module. So let's start off with this thing called materiality. So what is materiality? Basically, the concept refers to a situation where the financial statements of a company is considered to be material from the point of views of the preparation of financial statements if it has potential to alter the view or opinion of a reasonable person. So when you get down to auditing, you start looking at things called material misstatements. And what that is, is that a threshold is set by a company and they say that if any items are material by value or by concept, then they have to adjust for them. Because if they didn't, then the financial statements would look different from the viewpoint of the stakeholder. So, i.e., if I had £1 million of assets on my balance sheet, when in reality I only had 500 k then somebody looking to invest in that company sees £1 million. If they're looking at another company that has less than a million and they want to invest in this company purely on this basis, then that's a material misstatement because it's changed the view of that person wanting to invest in that company based on that value there. So if an item is material in nature, then it has to be adjusted. And again, when you get to the point of an auditor, so a company will set this materiality threshold, but then your auditor will look at your accounts and decide on a materiality threshold also. So a company's materiality might differ to that of an auditor. So say again, if a company decides that they've set materiality on 2% of net assets, so the total net assets in the company times by 2%, the auditor might look at the company and the industry that they're in and say, no, materiality should be 1% of revenue. And these figures might be higher or lower than one another. So again, so if an auditor decides that there is a material misstatement in your financial statements, then you must adjust for that. So under materiality, there is something called triviality. And what triviality is, is it's another threshold that a company will set where they deem items to be of a low value and significance. So again, say if you've got a 200 million pound turnover, I'm just gonna abbreviate that for you. So TO is turnover company, and they get an invoice for sundries worth 500 pound. And by sundries, I mean, you know, they buy bins for 500 pound. They've got two options. They can either stick this into repairs or maintenance, or they've got the option of grouping these really tiny amounts together into say, some a nominal like sundry expenses. Another example might be that, yes, they capitalize items. So they might capitalize laptops, say. So they might put those as fixed assets onto the asset register. So they might take them out of repairs and put them onto the balance sheet instead and depreciate those. However, they might decide that any items that would normally be a capital item, but are actually less than a hundred pounds that they're not going to. So even though it's a capital item, they're going to leave it in repairs because it's such a small amount that it's not worth doing anything about and the actual effect on the financial statements is minimal. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what triviality is. So let's move on here. So let's go over going concern. So there isn't a great deal to say about going concern in terms of what they can ask for in the exams. But basically, if I looked at a company, so if I looked at a set of accounts, and I believe that they can trade for the foreseeable future, so i.e. the next 12 months, then they are classed as a going concern. However, if I deem that the company is going to be going into administration or there's early warning signs of that, or say the overdraft is ridiculously high and they've got no way of, of paying the suppliers, etc. So just indications like that, then an auditor might say that they are they will not be trading for the foreseeable future. You might even have um, a group of companies who decide that they want to shut down one of their entities. So in that case, that company is no longer a going concern. But what this means is that we need to create 
an accounting policy note to state in the financial statements if we believe that they are a going concern or not. Because again, if you are an investor looking at a set of accounts and you see that they're not going to be trading for the foreseeable future, are you going to invest in that company? Probably not. Let's so moving on. So let's have a look at accounting policies and characteristics. Now, we all know that accounting policies and methods used by business, and that shows the effect of financial transactions and the use to record assets and liabilities in the statement of financial position. Now, in order for financial information to be useful, a business selects its accounting policies to fit in with the two fundamental qualitative accounting characteristics. So they are relevance and faithful representation. So we've already really touched on this. So in terms of it being relevant, you know, it has to be timely. So you want to be seeing information that is up to date. It's got to be relevant in nature. So, you know, the accounting standards, the accounting policies in the set of financial statements must be clear for people to be able to read this, read them properly, to make a decision on them. They must be clear so people must be able to understand what's being said in there. And they must also be comparable. So you need to be able to compare a set of financial statements with another company and also with last year to see, well, how well has this company um, performed this year? So with all of that, there are actually four accounting characteristics that support these two. And what they discuss in the exam is timeliness. So users of financial statements receive information in time to enable decisions to be made. We've got comparability. So that's where I said that we need to be able to compare to another set of financial statements and last year. We have something called verifiability. So you want to give the user the comfort and assurance that information given in a set of financial statements is faithfully represented. So that valuations have been performed correctly, that there's no material misstatements. And then finally, understandability. So there's no point in preparing a set of accounts that nobody understands. So information needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, so that the users can actually understand the information given in there. So these four here, so timely comparability, verifiability and understandability support both relevance and faithful representation. So if I was to put that into a diagram, it would look a whole lot like this. So at the top here, so this is the characteristics of useful information. So let's stick that up there like so. And over here we have relevance. So that information is useful and is material. Over here we've got faithful representation. So the info must correspond with transactions or events. Let's draw a little arrow here an arrow here and then here we've got the supporting qualitative characteristics. Now if this is your first time coming across the word qualitative all it means is that basically something that can be measured so we have comparability so if you can remember this as being compare so users can compare information with previous years and other businesses then we've got verifiability so that users are assured they feel comfortable of that information then we've got timeliness so the information is received in time for users to make a decision and then finally we have understandability so that information needs to be presented clearly Again, these down here are supportive qualitative characteristics and the fundamental qualitative characteristics are relevance and faithful representation. So I hope you found this video useful. As always, um, give it a like if you did or consider subscribing and um, that would be helpful. And I shall see you on the next video.